One of the biggest problems with the conventional approach to customer success is that it's completely reactive. If you think about it, everything we do in customer success is reactive. We react to customers when they ask for help or when they complain. We react when they stop using the solution. We even react when they're happy or successful. Everything is reactive. And I think most people sense that this isn't effective, but they just don't know what else to do. And no, touching the customer on some regular basis is not the same thing as being proactive because it adds no value. We have to find a way to flip our approach from being reactive and following the customer to being proactive and leading customers to success. Well, there's some reasons why this can be challenging. And one of them is there are some definite and consistent types of people that you run into in customer success. In fact, I think there are four classic types of CSMs. And the first is the pleaser. This is by far the most common type that you run into in CSMs. The pleaser believes that the best way to build customer loyalty is to always be highly responsive. They are the ones that live the mantra, the customer is always right. And pleasers are common in customer success precisely because they're people oriented. They like people. They are great at dealing with people, but they're also totally reactive in their approach. The second type is the hero. Now the hero, unlike the pleaser, knows the customer is not always right, but they like to wait to come to the rescue with the expertise and help that they have until after the customer has already gotten into trouble. Well, this is very satisfying for the hero because they relish that experience of solving for the customer and that moment when the customer is rescued. But there's a problem with this. And it is that rescues don't really work. Now, I, I know you may be saying, no, we've rescued a lot of customers. I understand. I have too. But I sensed whenever we did that, that, and maybe you've sensed this too, that maybe the rescue isn't as effective as we think it is. Well, for one thing, a lot of customers, we don't rescue. I mean, the majority of customers who get into that serious situation where we have to, you know, all jump in and solve, those are mostly going to churn, right? Uh, it varies, but, but the majority of those you're going to lose right away on the next renewal. But even the customers we rescue, I always had this feeling that it might not have been as effective as I'd thought. And we have this huge data set now, and so we decided to test this. Is this true? Is there an intuition that the feeling that customers might not be as rescued as we think is backed up in the data? So what we did this is quite interesting. We, we identified a group of customers who'd been rescued. It was a pretty large data set. And then we compared them to customers who had not had to be rescued, who'd not gone through the rescue experience. And what we were looking at was, what's the renewal rate for those customers after the rescue? And sure enough, rescued customers renew at half the rate of non-rescued customers. That, that means that even when you do rescue a customer, you're going to lose most of those customers uh, over the next couple of cycles. So that's why I say rescues don't really work that they're not as effective as we kind of wish they were. So that approach, that hero approach, it's not an effective way to run customer success. Now, the third type is what I call the enabler. Like the hero, the enabler knows customers are not always right and they can get very off track, but the enabler believes that it's not their place to intervene. It's not their role to tell the customer how to run their business. And as a result, even though the enabler could bring a lot of value and expertise to the customer, they're still completely reactive. Now, the final type of customer success rep that you run into is also the most rare. It's what I call the agent. Now, the agent is special because the agent takes a different approach. They take as their personal responsibility 
the achievement of the customer's results. They use this focus and prioritization of customer results to justify leading their customers rather than following them. And that's what fundamentally I mean by being proactive. Now, being an agent, it's not a personality type. It's a practice, it's a way of operating born out of taking accountability for the customer's results. And that's why I say anyone can become the agent. You don't have to be the expert that knows everything. It's about making customer results your top priority, even prioritizing them over customer satisfaction. Hopefully you can see that this is how you make that shift from being reactive to proactive, because once we are clear about what the customer's results are, we can focus all our energy, first of all, on keeping them focused on what those results are, but then leading them to those results with critical advice and expertise, measuring the results to ensure everybody knows how they're doing. That's proactive. That's the essence of the agent approach to customer success. And at the heart of this is one simple practice, which is the customer results strategy. That's how we establish what the customer result has to be. And it's how we get in alignment with our customers so that we're both on the same page, so that we're both working together for that. And that actually solves the perceived satisfaction difficulty in all this. Because the customer's satisfaction uh, is, is a distraction in a way, even for them. Because if we're focused and we get them to focus on their result, then they'll align their expectations with that and other factors will become less important. They'll fade to the background. So anyway, this is the essence of being the agent. And we're gonna talk more about what it is to be an agent and particularly unpack how do you operate a customer results strategy to drive customer results. So we'll look forward to seeing you in those future videos.